Hi guys, Nervash here, bringing you guys another video. So today we'll be looking at the Elder Scrolls Online, and is it worth getting, or should you stay away from it completely? So, this is going to be pros and cons of the game, from my own experience and from my own personal opinion. This is going to be a very long video, by the way, so keep that in mind. Shall we start? So, Bethesda has own this game okay alongside the rest of the Elder Scrolls games and the Fallout series as well. Now ESO or Elder Scrolls Online is a MMORPG game okay and it does not have any skill cooldown and it has a very large map to play with. Now it's available on Steam for $20 which gives you Elsewhere chapter which is a great chapter and it gives you access to the Necromancer class, which gives you a plethora of things, okay? Um, if you bought it for $50, it gives you not only the base game, but also Elsewhere, alongside Somerset, which gives you the Sigic skill line and jewelry crafting, and it gives you the Morrowind chapter, which you have access to the Warden, okay? So the DLC classes are the Warden, and the Necromancer, and the base classes in this game is Templar, Dragon Knight, Sorcerer, Nightblade. So, your Dragon Knight is your archetype of tanky class, um, type class that just holds block, and this is your archetype tank, okay? Sorcerer is your archetype mage in the game, Nightblade is your archetype assassins in the game that can go in stealth a lot easier than other classes would. And your Templar is your archetype um, healer in the game. Your Paladin, for instance. And your Warden is a mix match of every single class. And your Necromancer is a mix match of every single class. Now, if you've only bought the $20 and you get the Necromancer, the base classes right it's still the best of the uh, classes in the game the dlc classes are niche in their own way um, these classes excel on one thing or the other also do note that each class can do everything um, not at the same time but they can be a tank a healer a dps and you can play magicka or a stamina um, in this so magicka meaning you use your magic and you get to use most of your class skills, okay? And stamina, which is your stamina, you get to do different stuff as well. And you can tank, but of course some classes do things a lot better than the rest, okay? For instance, the Dragonite class, he can tank or she can tank a lot better than a Sorcerer would or a Nightblade would or a Warden or Necromancer or a Templar would, okay? And a Templar's healing well, is a lot better than a Dragon Knight, Sorcerer, or Nightblade would, okay? He has AoE healing for classes, the rest doesn't, pretty much. And of course, one thing I would note here is that races in this game actually matter. Why? It's not just the looks, but, the looks doesn't really matter, but the race passives, okay? Um, if you're a casual player and you're only here to play for the storyline and kind of find your own adventure um, for your first character, then I suggest not really caring about races. Just get through the game and just learn about the game. But if you actually want to get to the end game and on your first character, well, I suggest playing certain types of races for your character. Um, do keep in mind. Um, I will be making a video specifically on classes and the pros and cons and what race and what benefit from each class, what's the beneficial race for each class and what and depending on the archetype as well. So please do keep that in mind. So for now, um, if you're looking at this as a new player game, it doesn't matter for you, it does not include you, but if you want to start later on, keep a uh, watch out for my videos. I will do a series on that as well. And of course you can do a male or female, as you can see. So that's the first few cons um, that I mentioned there, which is alliance locked, uh, alliance locked and race locked to those alliances. And the Imperial is um, 
DLC locked. And another con is that each class, well, this game is all about skill. And certain classes for new beginners require practically uh, these classes, some classes here, require a higher skill ceiling. The skill ceiling is pretty high compared to other classes, so as a new player I suggest playing Templar or Sorcerer just because the skill ceiling is really low well for them. So that's the con there. Second con, I'll explain why I have 15 characters, which I'll explain later. Um, second con is there's a lot of information in the game and in terms of mechanics in the game that the game doesn't actually tell you, for instance combat mechanics. Um, a lot of the YouTubers that did give them out are now gone from the ESO community. Um, they're not dead, keep that in mind, they're still living. Um, for instance, Fangrush and Deltius Gaming, the, these guys, um, also King of Games, they still play. Uh, Dots Gaming, Alcast, they still play. But Fangrush and Deltia, and I'm forgetting one more person that I used to watch a lot on Twitch. Um, sorry if I can't name him right now. Um, I, in my head, I know his face, but I can't say his name. But these guys used to put out uh, videos, and also Lefty Lucy, of course. Um, they used to put out videos regarding uh, mechanics in the game, and sadly enough, they've gone away from Elder Scrolls Online, and also, this is just add -ons. and also they've they, the information that's out right now. Of course, the mechanics change over time, and it's different now. So a lot of YouTubers, a lot of the information is actually locked behind the community. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about the community. It's just the community in the game tends to have they they tend to think of. Information is power, so I'm gonna keep it for my guild and my guild only and I will not tell them anything So that's the con there if you want to know certain things about the game You'll have to look it for yourself or online online will not show you and the game itself will not Show you how to do certain mechanics. That's that's found out by certain communities that will help you and Keep an eye on that. I will be bringing those mechanics to light uh, in my later videos, so in my later series that I will do about all about ESO and combat mechanics and such, which I will pour out every single thing that I know about the game onto here and I will update them if I need to. So keep an eye on those. So the con is, yes, if you don't have any guild, if you're not in part of any guild or any friends that's playing this, that's been playing this for a long time, certain mechanics is locked behind the community and you'll have to beg <laughs> for the community to tell you what the mechanics are and certain things of to make money and such so that's a pro there at a con there second con is that if you bought the DLCs only as in you bought the 50% at uh, the 50% the 50 euros 50 dollar game package which gives you the the main DLCs the main chapters uh, excluding the new chapter Greymore um, which you have to buy separately, which I suggest buying, by the way, which is a great storyline and great, really good. Um, it brings you to Skyrim again and gives you the the Skyrim intro, so which is really great. But yeah, um, the second con here is that if you don't have the subscription, you're actually missing out on all the DLCs. What do I mean by that? All of this, okay. The Dark Brotherhood, the, the dra uh, Dragon Bones, Dark Hold, the Horror Storm, Horns of the Reach, um, Merkmire, Orsinium, Scalebreaker, Shadow of the Heist. All these things are either extra maps that you can go through or extra dungeons with extra crafting uh, stations as well. Now you can get Imperial City for free, which is great. I highly suggest getting this. And I highly suggest if you're gonna buy anything, I'm gonna do a suggestions things later. So this is some of the cons here is that if you don't have ESO Plus, you're locked out to some of the content in the game. And also the con here is it says a uh, 2000 
uh, for Dark Butterhood Guild. That's 20 euros. Okay, 1,000 is 10 dollars or 10 euros. Keep that in mind. Now, apart from that, everything else is uh, cosmetics. For instance, cosmetics for your house, house cosmetics. You have, you can own a house. You can have own house in game anyway for free. But if you want to buy these, for instance, you can buy them for ridiculous amounts of money. For instance, it looks like the cheap, the most expensive one here is the Strident Springs. The, yeah, this for six thousand three hundred plus. Pretty damn expensive. That's sixty euros, sixty-five euros. Okay, sixty-four euros, sixty-two euros. If you have money, okay. But these are very, very expensive. Look, a hundred and ten euros. It gets more expensive. These are the cons here, okay? Do you need them? Not really. It's your own choice. If you want to be kind of... Like, this is for free, so I can, I can buy that. Because it's free. So, which is good. These are free stuff. They do give up free stuff every now and again. But yeah, like, so for instance, storage. This does not go in your bank. It's just extra storage that you can get. Uh, you can get storages in-game, but you can buy them. So that's the cons there. Some of it might look like pay to win, but it's mostly kind of cosmetics, for instance. The packs here gives you extra, um, these are motifs or extra areas that you can buy, accessories, um, bedroom sets, this is all furniture, practically cosmetics. Parlouring, this is all cosmetics, 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 skins, crafting, this is all your motifs, the styles of um, that you can use in the game, as again, cosmetics. Wardrobe, same thing. Dies, same thing. Mounts, cosmetic as well. Uh, Non-combat pets, apart from this thing, which gives you extra five slots for all characters. It's meh. Uh, apart from that, they don't really do anything, apart from looks. So a lot of cosmetics and a lot of pay-to-win-ish stuff. For instance, um, upgrades. If you want to play an Imperial, you get you have to buy the Imperial Edition. Do I recommend playing in the Imperial Edition? I'll mention that later. Not really. Um, the Warm and Collector's Pack. Nah. Somerset. Meh. Additional Character Slot. Okay. Service Tokens. Your name Change. Alliance Change. Appearance Change. Race Change. As well. And your Skill Lines. Here's the thing about these. The Crown here is, oh no, you can buy a Skill Line. You can buy all the Alliance War Skill Line. You don't have to spend PvP. Oh no, you don't have to... You can get an instant level master for fighters guild. You don't have to spend hours grinding for it for characters. Here's the con. That's the cons there. But the pro is, you actually have to get every single. Yeah, if you want to get this, you'll have to actually get one character maxed out in Alliance War. One character maxed out in fighters guild. You have to max these out yourself on your first character before you could buy these on your other characters. Okay. Same with the sky shards. Con here is you can buy these for the rest of your characters, but you can have if you need to buy this for your other characters, you need to have them all unlocked first on your first character. So that's the con there. Con is second one. Regarding this, while we're on here, loot crates. Literally, loot crates. <laughs> Not worth. Um, where is it? Ah, writing lessons. For 1,000, it gives you so 50 euros, right? Let's say 1,000. 10, 10 euros, it gives you 10 books. That's 10% of your speed of your writing, okay? Now, this is class bound, not account bound, class bound. So each class will require it, each character will require you to level up your mount from 0 to 60. You can bypass that by buying 60. Uh, he's spending 60 euros on your class um, buying this on your character and you get maximum writing speed um, this is what maximum writing speed looks like um, this is how fast you're gonna go but you can use the skill line which is a lot of stuff you can go faster you see 
So, or it takes about two months to actually level by going to the stable every single day and you spend gold to level up your speed. So all of these are add-ons, um, very in-depth, that's why um, the game is locked through community because you have to go search for these yourselves. So other cons, that's about it, really. You get your assistance. Um, another con, if you'll want to buy a merchant, which you sell to, the con here is that she takes money off you, so she takes 30% of what you sell. The banker is really nice because you have access to the banks right off the bat. You don't have to go to the city or the town to access your bank a lot. But it takes 50 euros or $50 to do so. That's the con. Now, another con is that if you're not an ESL Plus member, you don't get access to the whole DLCs. Okay? If you just bought the $50 pack, you don't get access to everything, as I said earlier on. So, also, you don't get access to 10% of XP already that you're getting from ESL Plus, and you don't get access to the craft bag. Now, the craft bag is an infinite bag of materials that you pick up. As you can see, I have a heck of a lot here. Okay? That's over 100, 200, 3. So, let's say this is over about 300, right? Now let's take a look. ESO Plus also gives you access to extra bank space and character space, okay? So you get 480 maximum. Without that, it's reduced to half, 240. As you can see, I'm over 440. Plus, so you don't get access to this. So it sucks. That's the con there if you don't spend money in the game. You don't get all the DLCs and you don't get the craft bag. And also, you don't get to wear certain crafted sets if you don't have the DLC areas. Um, you do get access to the whole map with the base game. And if you bought the $50 one, which gives you the chapter Morrowind, Elsewhere, and um, Morrowind, Elsewhere, and Somerset, you get the Mormon, which is Warrenfell area here which it has its own crafting stations which you can wear okay you can create and wear you have access to the thing here which you can create and wear but you don't have access to the DLC areas such as southern ellis where uh, merc meyer the gold coast hughes bane western skyrim because that's that's where um, what you call it, the Raymore DLC is, and you don't get access to Clockwork City, which you can have a transmute station, which will then let you change traits in your gear. Now, that does not mean you can't wear it, you just can't craft it. If you have a friend that has all the DLCs on ESO Plus and is able to access these, you can, or if you're in a guild that has someone that, um, you can actually ask them to craft it for you. Of course, you have to pay the fees. For that and you get to wear the items so there's that and it's very grindy it's a grinding game and a lot of information is locked behind um, either behind a guild or a community or behind yeah that's pretty much it the information is locked behind the community really and the game doesn't really give you a lot of info so those are the cons so far. It's skill based, it's alliance locked, it's race locked to alliance. You know, it's like, ah, uh, you need an ESO plus, you need a subscription. Oh no, but here's the pros. The pros that kept me going. These are the pros that let me stay since I was 14, I'm kidding. Since 2014. Why, these are the, pro the pros of why I have 14 characters. These are the pros that I still play the game till now and this was the pros that I decided to make money on it. Um, these are the pros that I spent money in the game getting ESO Plus, getting not only as you can see here I, some of these are highlighted because I bought them already. Um, these are the pros that there's a big reason why I bought these and why I bought the ESO Plus, why I bought the, the 
multiple character slots why I spent money in the game okay so first of all it's a vast exploration game you you get to explore and do certain events with your friends you get to explore the whole content base game without anything okay first of all you don't need the DLCs to do great in the game you don't need all the DLCs in the game as I said earlier on you can have a friend that has access to these or so know someone in the guild that has access to these DLCs you can craft them the whole thing okay you can they can craft you the whole thing if you have Somerset and you bought the $50 one you have access to the, the jewelry craft thing you can actually get um, improve your 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 rarity to to the max and you can wear every single anything in the game really the only things you can't do is trial based armor pieces which are required for certain trials in the game but then again if you're locked behind them you're not going to do them anyway right and the pvp is vast okay it's um it, this will take you 20 minutes from going from one end to the other 20 minutes from one end or more even um imperial city is is free to play so you can go in here and actually get this okay it's so many content you can make money from pvp you can make money from going into imperial city you can make money everywhere it's so easy to make money nowadays the only reason um the only hard part is the info that is locked behind the community but me i will make a i will make a series that will cover everything about eso so keep an eye on that another pro is that it's really fun and vast as i said already and you're not locked to an archetype you can become an, a magica class okay this is a magic class and i can become a werewolf if i wanted to you can make your own character you're not locked to skills your skills you can buy every single skills in the game the only thing you need to do is go around and pick up all the skill shards in the game you have 444 skills points in total and you can get every single skill in here if you wanted to okay every single skill is available it just takes time to use it but that i mean then then again you get to explore and have fun with your friends <clears throat> second uh pro is that money making is so easy and you're not locked to that you have five guilds all right you have that's a pro there you can have five guilds here i have one more slot and why is it useful to have five gear, uh, guilds well that's your information right there you have five places of information that you can go to um if you want to join the guild that i'm in house of uh, s s theoretics i don't know how to say this properly um i will link it down in the description below for the discords and if you want to ask questions please ask there so why is it good to have five guilds well there's this thing called trading guilds where you can go into and put things to trade to get money you get you get gold okay uh, for instance the material that you you pick up on the ground uh, if you're going material farming for crafting and stuff the golden bits like the golden grade material you use for up upgrading if you have excessive amounts of it if you're over let's say 100 each then sell the 100 more for a trade guild and you have five trade guilds 30 slots each so you know you, you do the maths that's 30 times 5 right 30 times 5 that's 150 slots of trading available for you each day if they you know and you get a lot of money from that alone so it's so fun and the siege and the pvp in this game is really fun um the alliance war here is 1000 plus players or 2200 plus players all at one go on these so i can't really show you now but these different areas here are keeps that you can go into and siege with a group of people of like maximum of like 26 people or so um, we call them a zerg and you go in and you put up your own ballistas your own catapults and you break down the walls it's so fun and there's like a hundred players on the other side defending their their keep their tower their 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 kingdom you know so it's very fun the pvp is vast and you get to play with a lot of people and fight them same with imperial city there's a ba there's so many money you can make in this and you can fight molag ball himself yes molag ball himself you can whoop his ass <laughs> and 
and go in the middle and fight different factions in there as well, trying to fight Bolog Ball and Firemang. So it's just so many fun things. The exploration is vast. Uh, the graphics is it's beautiful depending on your system. You know, you don't have to play it this far. You you can play it in first person. Uh, the only reason why I don't play it in first person is because it's nauseating um, for me. But you can if you want to play that Skyrim-esque uh, feeling. You can play it. It doesn't. It won't stop you. The game will not stop you from playing. And as I said earlier on, it is not. I can spam my my abilities here, as you can see. I I can spam this like crazy. And there is no global skill down. It just takes a lot of magicka and resources. You can do all things. You can start stealing. You can start murdering every single Don't innocent in here. If you want from Skyrim. Um, the map is huge. It takes me maybe 20 to 30 minutes to cover everything in here. And it will take you hours just exploring. There's The content in the game is so much. So much. So if you just got the fifty dollar one, that's enough. That will that is that will get you through the whole game without having the requirement of getting DLCs. If you want to get the DLCs, go for it. Um, there's no con. There's it will give you everything. Okay. So so there's that. That's that's the pros. These these are the pros that keeps me playing. And it's vast. Um, it's all about skill play. You have, for instance, if you want to make money. Um, the reason why I have 15 characters, it's that I can log into each class, each character, and craft every single day, right? Not only that, there's add-ons, okay? Let me show you this. It instantly picks it up for me, instantly will craft for me for add-on. Is this, is this, yes, it is part of the game. You can have an add-on that will let you instantly craft for you, and... You don't have to worry about it. And you, I, all I do is to make money. I'll show you now my full rotation here on how I make money, which is the pros. It's so simple. You don't even need to have a fully leveled character for crafting, okay? You just need to have a level 50 character You that you went off and learned to how to craft, the, the basics of crafting, the crafting quest, the introduction, okay? Once you get that, get your levels to uh, get a character to 50, you pick up the quest, you download the add-ons for crafting, and you go to you go to this and you start crafting here, and that's it. You make money. You make four thousand six hundred and fifty per character, okay? And that's one way of making money. That's that's not that's been there since part of the game, and it's the raw. That's raw money that you're getting from it. They're not gonna nerf this. By the way, they haven't nerfed it at all. Uh, they probably have in the past. I haven't played, but they're not. They're not gonna be um, going nuts on it, you know. So so yeah, it's just it's just an amazing game and these are some of the pros here um, as you can see I'm probably not uh, crafting properly but definitely. so now as I'm, I'm gonna show you guys this and it's very it's vast it's a beautiful game and it's just so much that you can do in it the 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 pros kind of outweigh the cons, such as if even though you're skill locked, even though you're alliance locked, and you're locked, your character is locked in a certain line, it's fine. It's totally fine. And if you have extra money in the game, then go buy the or well, any race, any alliance. That's it. All you need is that any race, any alliance for 20 euros. That there you go. You know, 50, 70 euros you spend in the game, and you have access to everything. You don't, that's it, you know, that's that. And as you can see, I, I, my money, it's not the amount, amount of money, like, it's not a lot, but it's enough, really, to get me going. And there's so many things you can do to make money in this. So, pros is the community is great as well. That if you join my guild that I'm in, um, if you want to have access to information, I will share everything. That's another pro there about this channel, is that I will go through everything. 
about Elder Scrolls and I will break every single down in a series and you will have all the info you need so and another pro is that as I mentioned you can play any race any of your kinds um, any any type so it's just a beautiful game so now we'll go through I know there's just a few pros there um, from my experience it's very enjoyable so you kind of have to take it as a grain of salt really the, the, the crons, the cons that I've kind of laid out seems to be a lot more than the pros, but it's pure enjoyment for me. If you, it is grindy, okay, it is grindy. So if you don't like a very grindy game, then this is not a game for you. But if you like to grind and if you like to go through the vast amount of storylines and a vast amount of stories in the game, then this is the game for you. And if you want to play with your friends and go through that experience, then please play this game. It's an amazing game. Now, my suggestions of where to spend money on, okay? On why is it worth money? Is it worth for me spending some money? Hell yeah, it's fun. Now, I suggest buying any race, any alliance, if you're any alliance, if you're buying this, and buying the main DLCs, which you already have, and buy Greymore as well. I highly suggest buying this as well 4040 euros you get the the dark brotherhood thieves guild and orsinium which is great um just because you know there's thoughts that's the guilds right they can make you extra money and extra stuff that you can do so buy those that's it you need to do is just buy any race any alliance and then buy the um four pack it gives you for mega pack and buy uh, Moro and buy Merkmeyer as well. That's it. That's all you need to buy. Merkmeyer, the four pack, the four pack, and um, Raymore. That's that's it. Anything else you don't need to spend money. You can just buy the the, the subscription. In terms of subscription, I buy. I suggest buying three months because it's twelve fifty a month. So three months, it's thirty five dollars. So you're paying for less and you get all the crowns instantly. So you get 1,650 crowns per month. And if let's say you bought the whole year one for 124 euros or dollars subscription, you get 19,000 crowns that you can spend on. You can get everything in here for 19,000 crowns. So there you go. Um, and you get the craft bag for a year. So that's that that's my 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 suggestions but also my suggestion is if you want to support bethesda then i suggest buying that but let's say you only have 50 euros and you're within the 100 euro range but you want to get everything that's possible including the extra dlcs and gray more then i highly suggest going to cd keys um i i'll i'll link the website down below they are they are like G2A where you can buy um, certain games cheaper uh, CD keys is better for me because you can buy Greymore expansion for 21 euros the collector is 27 euros which is <coughs> 58 euros in Steam so you're saving a lot of money for Greymore collector's edition so so yeah check that out as well um, it's in the description down below so is it worth getting in my opinion, yes, it is. Because the amount of fun I'm having with friends, and you get to meet with new people, and it's just so fun. And also, you you get to learn a lot, and in terms of experience and stuff like that, and of mechanics, if you join my guild, if you join the guild that I'm in, if you join the Discord that I'm in, I could tell you everything about the game. So there's that. If you see, if you're watching this right now. And if you're, if you've already passed the 34 minute mark, if you're still watching, join the guild that I'm in, and I will teach you everything about the game. So there is that, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please do watch. Uh, keep an eye out on the series that I will I will make about um, Elder Scrolls Online and everything about Elder Scrolls Online. And and yeah, guys. Um, do watch me on stream as well i do st uh, stream on a regular basis i will be streaming today as well 
um, check that out. If you want questions and answers, um, check that out. I will help you out in terms of leveling, showing you games, the games and the mechanics. Also, check out my Twitter. It's great uh, information there. Also, Discord, my own Discord down below. Check out the description down below and the guild Discord as well and the guild that I made as well. So apart from that, I hope you all uh, enjoy this video. Sorry for the very lengthy, worth it or should you not, um, worth it. It practically boils down to it's your own opinion. <laughs> you know, give it a shot for twenty dollars if you want to make more. If you want to spend uh, more into it, do spend into it. So it's all personal stuff. If you're into MMORPGs, spend the fifty euros. If you're not, don't spend it at all. Okay, so there's that, folks. So thank you guys for joining in. And sorry for the lengthy video, but uh, that's for me. And see you guys next time. Peace.